Right, good morning everyone. So, uh, it is 5.47 apparently and I am going to meet up with a friend, Adam, and uh, he's big into shooting wildlife so I, I'm going to meet him at one of the nature reserves and uh, we're going to see what we can get. He's uh, very good, very passionate about what he does and uh, we're going to see what we can capture. So I've got the A7R4 with the 200 to 600 with me. I'm um, hoping to see some owls and maybe a kingfisher. Um, I think he said white heads or something, I can't remember what they're called, the other birds. Um, so yeah, hopefully uh, we'll get something. The weather's lovely, the uh, sun's just coming up. So uh, yeah, heading heading north um, to uh, go and see him. So we shall see you when we're there. Hi right, guys, uh, the roads are busy today, um, sort of. This is how roads should be. Just me on it. Alright. We are at how do you say that? Is it Bower Bower Beach? Yeah. Okay, so we're at Bower Beach. Which is a wildlife sort of a haven. That's uh pretty cool, plenty of wildlife. So chaffinches, kestrels. Kingfishers, badgers. You ever seen any badgers? They're gone. Swallows, butterflies, field voles. Lots of different sort of wildlife. It's cool. Let's have a little one up here. Two Adam Stanley's trying to find the uh, cuckoo. You ever seen any badgers or foxes? Have you ever seen any badgers or foxes? Okay. Looks like it's just luck, isn't it? It's just luck. He's somewhere here. So, should we wander along the... Uh... They spotted some in there. Isn't that true? Yeah. He's looking for his binoculars, so I'm guessing he's not the tree. Oh. Okay. They weren't excited about it. So. <laughs> Have one quick nose of the one quick nose of the lake before we go, because yeah. I guarantee otherwise if we don't, yeah. we will miss the shot of the day. Yeah. Yes. Well, the ducks are sitting on the wood now, that's quite cool. All lined up. On that, um, you know, the fallen tree. That's quite funny. Oh, yeah. No kingfisher there. No, I know. It's a shame. Bloody heck. Oh well. He was there this morning. Yeah. Morning. Problem is they're so fast as well. They are. You've got to get them perched, haven't you? Well, I've had them all on these perches in front of you. That's, That's ideal. Yeah. So, like, they do come there. That's the one you want. Is that one right here, isn't it? The real yeah. close one. Oh, yeah, it is, yeah. Close to the better. Hmm. Yeah, they're small little birds, aren't they? Yeah. Right, should we walk, should we walk down there? We, yeah, hopefully when we come back they might be... Uh, you never know. Well, it depends on the weather and everything as well, doesn't it, I suppose, and what they've, what they've eaten the day before. It does, yeah. A lot of factors involved with them. Yeah. Especially smaller birds, I think. Uh, the best shot I got earlier was the... Um, the, heron, the heron coming to land. Yeah, yeah, I think... Well, I was flat at 600 mil then. <laughs> and he was full in the frame, pretty much. Yeah. That can be a nice shot. Hopefully. It was definitely sharp because I got one. I'd look at one of them. It was definitely sharp. So, out of about twenty shots, I think. That's a lovely view. So, what's this reservoir called? Is that the Bow 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 Beach? Bow Beach Reservoir. Oh, cool. 
What a stunning view. I know. Let's bring the drone down. You should fly over it in the morning mist. Yeah. That'd be fantastic. Get to places where uh, we can't. <laughs> I'll take a shot of that. Oh, there's a couple of geese coming in, I think. There. A couple of geese coming straight in. Oh, yeah, the geese going down. There's loads of them over there. Yeah, sure the lap wing, mate. Where is it? On the bank. Oh, yeah. Pretty little bird, that is. Yeah, they're quite cool. What have we got down here? Oh, I think he's taking off, look. Oh, shit. Quite see, I've got sunglasses on. <laughs> Looking into the another heron up here, that coming over. Another heron? Over trick to your right. Over the trees. Oh yeah, yeah. Can you walk round this then? Yeah, Didn't we go into a bit before? We might be yeah. Um, not, not a very long path. No. We're getting all in unison together. Oh. It's quite small for a heron. Yeah. Probably just recently just uh just freaked out because I uh, the they're looking at it yeah because the crows freaked out neck up <laughs> so loads and loads of wildlife around uh, this morning absolutely brilliant so everything from the herons to the geese to um, uh, loads of different things I think it was a white throat we had as well uh, kingfisher the barn owl made a very very brief appearance um, but then we never saw it again which was a shame. Um, you know, so there was lots and lots to see, which is great. Even a couple of surprises, which we weren't expecting. Uh, there was wrens. There was a robin. Um, what else do we have? Uh, dragonflies. Uh, even tadpoles and uh, water snails and things like that as well. So really, really good morning, and uh, just watching the birds and other animals doing their thing for looking for food and, and things like that. So really, really nice morning and uh, very worthwhile getting up at 5am to uh, go and meet Adam and uh, try and get some wildlife shots and it was really worthwhile. Um, beautiful light um, but as in this time of year it starts getting quite harsh pretty quickly uh, once the sun, the sun starts to rise. Uh, right guys so we're waiting for the kingfisher to reappear. So it's been on the perch over there we've got a couple of perches here. Um, he may reappear. The 200 to 600 and the A7R4 are behaving very well today. It's a bit bizarre. We've got quite a few shots here that are really quite good. Um, and I've kind of changed the technique of, of usage as such. And I've gone for a wide, not wide, a large spot, um, or centre, large centre. Um, for focusing and then just to track birds in flight with using that and it seems to be much much more on it because you're controlling where it's actually focusing um, in the center so just got to keep up with the birds and most of the birds are a good size anyway so it's, it, I've got some good shots of some geese and things like that I think it's just the smaller birds it struggles with in flight um, in the real world and uh, you know so but until I get home and actually have a look at these yeah, the shots on here, we well, won't really know. Um, but uh, the kingfisher's been out and about a few times. Um, I just wanted to come to one of these closer perches, it'd be nice. I um, managed to find a shady spot with a relatively good view. Um, and uh, hopefully, it may come out. It's other one, other perches right over there on the on that fallen log. But yeah, Adam's gone home, um, wife duties and baby duties. So uh, it's nice to meet up again, Adam. So I haven't seen him for ages. And uh, we were hoping for a barn owl that had never appeared. Or well, we saw it once, briefly, and it just sort of disappeared. Um, Kingfisher has been on the perch. A few
few times, which is good. But I just want it on one of these closer ones to be nice. See what's uh, what's possible in the next half hour, and then uh, head back. I've ripped my trousers as well, so I've got <laughs> I've had, uh, crutch cooling at the moment, which is quite funny. Um, plenty more hens and other animals around, flying around. So just a uh, waiting, waiting game. Wildlife. You've got to remember, most of your shots are completely by chance. So, completely by chance. Um, some birds, obviously, well, most birds have routines, but the fact that you could be in the right place at the right time is quite remote, unless you're in your back garden or uh, somewhere you really know the place and you know exactly what time they're, they're going to come. But then, proof today, Adam's been here loads of times and the barn owl didn't really do what was expected so uh, it just shows you things change with wildlife so yeah a lot of it is uh, right place right time so as you can see the uh, kingfisher appeared and uh, managed to get a bit of a video of it um, but uh, yeah quite a long way away 150 feet plus and uh, sort of in the shade as well just under shadow and uh, unfortunately he uh, he disappeared back into his uh, into his little uh, burrow or whatever and uh, we didn't see him again for a bit but uh, he did disappear off behind the bushes for a while and then reappeared with the fish and uh, and then we didn't see him again after that which is a shame but uh, there was plenty of other things going on so we'd look at them as well and try to capture what we could So with this wren, it was quite playful. It was uh, relatively tame, actually. It wasn't too bothered about me or Adam being relatively close. I mean, less than 10 feet away from it a lot of the time. Quite inquisitive, looking straight down at me. Uh, it was on a telegraph uh, cable or a power cable. And uh, sort of 20 feet, 25 feet up. Uh, very vocal at uh, about 6.30, 7 o'clock in the morning. Um, as you can see, quite a beautiful little bird. And uh, the robin was there as well, a couple of robins. Uh, missed a photo opportunity, unfortunately, of um, I'm guessing a young one being fed or the, the mother being fed by the, uh, the male, but uh, wasn't quite sure. This shot here, unfortunately, is in the, really in the shade, but it didn't do too bad. Um, actually, uh, in that, was, I think this is called the white throat that uh, Adam was talking about. Uh, right the other side of the tree, up in the branches, but still managed to. Uh, Capture not a bad shot, that's a crop in there. And uh, I've never seen one before. Uh, nice nice looking bird there. And uh, it's a really interesting morning. We um, I learned quite a bit actually, just uh, in a short period of time with Adam. He's, he's quite knowledgeable about the different birds, especially the, the noises they make, their chirps and everything. There's a squirrel here. This is shot at 1 1 60th of a second at 600mm. So, you know, it's got the stabilisation system on the Sony. Uh, camera and the body works really quite well. So even down at a low shutter speed, it was it was pretty good. Um, this other squirrel there having a bit of a bit of breakfast. Um, a few dragonflies flying around. Managed to get a few stationary shots uh, on them, sort of in the sun, warming themselves back up. Managed to get round to this one on the side to get an eye shot, and uh, it's quite nice. That 600 millimeter blows the backgrounds out really nicely, and uh, you can even get some you know relatively good. Um, detail, detailed shots of uh, flowers and, and things like that quite nicely. This shot here is quite heavily cropped in but it's actually a dragonfly flying around. Managed to lock onto that quite easily. Um, so that's quite nice to, to actually capture. For years I've been trying to get those and um, you know even four or five years ago I, I just about managed to capture one which was one of my best shots I've ever taken. I was so pleased to catch, capture it and uh, you know it seems a lot easier now. Um, these are all taken with the 200 600 so even a, a ladybird um, having a munch on a aphid or whatever it was it was eating um, it's quite easily done. Uh, this mink appeared and uh, I presume it's a mink uh, ran along the, the tree trunk there um, the actual kingfisher was sat on the perch on the end of the, the, the fallen tree and it just ignored it completely went straight past and went for a swim in the, uh, the lake and then disappeared off so obviously they are a bit of a pest for other wildlife but um, you know what can we do um, but uh, yeah, I'm not sure what, what bird this is, but uh, yeah, still plenty around. A bit of a crow there sitting on there. It worked quite well with the old, 
um, tree like that uh, works quite well with a, a crow or a, a jackdaw sat on it. Uh, this is where the, the autofocus system surprised me and it actually surprised Adam quite quite a lot. It managed to focus straight on a little uh, a bit like a daddy long legs uh, fly with no trouble at all. We were like, okay. <laughs> all these autofocus problems we've had and it's locking onto small insects. Uh, the heron hiding there. We've got him coming in earlier. And a green woodpecker um, as well, but he was miles away. And that's a massive crop in um, already on top of what you've just seen there. Right guys, so I'm just going to go through a few settings with you to get the best out of the A7R4 and the 200-600mm to uh, big zoom lens. And with birds in flight, as we know at the moment, with these two setups as such, the combo, it can be a sort of a bit hit and miss. So, I've been messing around a lot. So, here's a few settings here. Um, balance emphasis, continuous AF, so using an AFC all the time. And also the AF sensitivity, tracking sensitivity. So I've just got it on locked on. Um, reduced it down from, literally I had it on five. I had it on, I've basically gone through each one, just basically I, to me, it's, I just found that actually number one seems to work best. Uh, focus priority on uh, the aperture drive in AF and then we go into the next one here um, I've got it on circulate don't really know if it makes much difference I've had it on circulate I had it on does not circulate but today I've been using it and I got some very good results so I've left it on that phase detect area on and that's kind of it um, my focus points, I normally use it on um, small spots, as you can see there, for pinpointing through trees or small subjects like a wren, um, stuff like that, or a bird through up through the branches so you can pinpoint. And that's a non-static, um, sorry, a non-static, a static object, um, like a bird just sat on a perch. Um, um, large center. Um, for me, it seems to have been the best results. A bit like old school um, cameras where we used to use DSLRs a long time ago, or even SLRs, not having that many focus points in the area in the middle. Um, I've just just changed my technique slightly, and I'm just trying to stay with the, in the middle, keep the bird in the middle of the shot, so I can get focus on it. And I've had many many shots today, and very little misses. So it's just a case of learning a new technique. Um, yeah, it's not 100%, we know that, and obviously, hopefully, Sony will bring out some kind of firmware update, but for now, that seems to work quite well. I've also got uh, zone and wide, so zone is a slightly bigger area, uh, which does work quite well, um, but again, I found that actually um, the centre works quite well. Um, obviously, if you go down to... Uh, flexible spot you can actually oh, he says um, you can actually change the sizing um, as well so um, you've got center obviously and if you go into your different settings you've got other ones as well but I've these are the four I generally use so small flexible spot a center which is a bit bigger the zone and wide so that's my general usage I've got the the button on the side of the lens. There you go. So basically on my side of the lens, I can just flick through quickly. With one click each time on what I need to see, you know, so I can change my focus points very, very quickly. And that's the custom button on the lens, which is great. It's uh, changed the way I work with, especially with this lens. Um, so that's just a couple of little tips there, guys. And uh, don't forget to click the subscribe button and also the little notification bell as well. And uh, I'll be out and about with this lens quite a bit. I'm just basically dialing in my technique, really. Um, just a slight modification on the way I use it. And uh, not relying on AF wide or AF zone so much, more in the center, like I say, just being a bit more uh, a bit more of a challenge to actually get the shots. But then that's what photography's about. It's getting a bit too easy, I think, anyway. 
So yeah, if you've got the A9 or you know anything fast, um, it is very hard to miss anything. You know, you could end up with 200 shots, 200 shots in focus um, as you wanted. And that's kind of, yeah, brilliant. But, you know, you can do it with your eyes shut. And I think, you know, the photography is getting so advanced that yes, it's great for efficiency, great for, you know, getting that shot, but where's the challenge anymore? You know, the challenges, the challenges are getting less and less and less. And I think the enjoyability side of things is being missed out. Hey guys, I um, hope that video was uh, enjoyable and uh, also uh, possibly informative. Um, don't forget to click that subscribe button and also the little notification bell and I shall see you soon.